Hey everyone, welcome. My name is John Ray and this message is designed to help you understand a little bit about what makes us as Grace Church of Northwest Arkansas click. Um, we believe that everything starts with belonging and that leads to becoming and that long but that leads to believing. So I want to share in this short video what it means to belong, what it means, why we put that first in our ethos and our messages at Grace Church. It's been 10 years now, over 10 years, since our family lost our youngest daughter, Olivia, in a tragic accident. And that first Christmas after losing Olivia, our family huddled up with our oldest daughter, Hope, who was living in Norway at the time. We were graciously offered a cabin in the far north of the country where some friends lived. It was extremely cold and perpetually dark that time of year. In fact, the landscape seemed to mirror the grief that we were feeling on the inside. So we flew to this far north town in Norway. We entered into the cabin cold, grieving, disoriented, and as I rummaged through the cabinets, I found something that just stopped me in my tracks, literally had my jaw drop. It was a bottle of Rudy's barbecue sauce. Now we're 15 hours above the Arctic Circle in Norway, and here in this cabinet, one of the few food items in the whole thing is a bottle of barbecue sauce from Texas, from our, one of our family's favorite restaurants. Um, now, it was as if God was saying, no matter how far you go, no matter how hurt you feel, no matter how many questions you have, I got you. I see you. You're mine. All in a bottle of barbecue sauce that some former missionary from Texas happened to leave behind in this cabin. Now, I'm not sure how to neatly fit that into a God who, div who divinely places barbecue sauce in Norway for a grieving family. Um, not sure how to fit that in a theology, but I know what I know. And what I know is everything starts with belonging. Belonging does for us what no mere words can. Everything starts with it, and without it, we're all lost. Belonging is a key component to the gospel proclamation of the kingdom of God. And it's key to our ethos at Grace Church. So this, in this video, what I want to do is I want to offer one historical framework, four points of scriptural reference, a warning, and conclude with why, again, why we start with belonging at Grace Church. So let's start with the scriptural re reference. Well, it starts in Genesis when God creates people to be in a family that he'll walk with. And, and we kind of miss that when we skip over that narrative. But we, we see the intimacy of belonging that God creates with Adam and Eve. But this goes on through all the covenants that God gives. You see, covenants were always a sign. They were a symbol. They were a promise of God's people belonging, of their inclusion into that family. Uh, it's summed up most concisely in Jeremiah 32, 38, where it says, They will be my people, and I will be their God. Now, this is not some kind of status in the sense of one person above another, but it is a promise of belonging with that. Well, and we see this ep echoed time and time again in the New Testament as well. Um, it starts with the Magnificat. It starts with the announcement of Jesus himself, where there is this promise of inclusion of people who have been excluded, left out, cut off, would no longer be that. They would be brought into the kingdom of God. They would be restored to that belonging relationship. Jesus actually prays for this in his high priestly prayer in John. Jesus, the, the thing on Jesus' heart that he's most passionate about is that it says this in chapter 15, just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. And my commandment is this, that you love one another as I have loved you. Why, why this love? Well, it's symbolic. It's the thing that makes belonging happen. 
That's the fuel of it that does this. He goes on to say how he no longer calls us just students, but friends. It's a sign of this belonging. So God institutes it in the garden. He, he reemphasizes it through the covenant. Jesus comes to reveal it, and he prays that that was what was happening. And then Paul, as he's establishing the church, he says this is the primary metaphor. This is the primary way we understand ourselves as the church. In 1 Corinthians 12, he writes, For just as the body is one yet many members, and all are members of the body, though many, we are one body, so too is Christ. So we belong not in just some transactional sense, not in just some um, theoretical way, but, but literally we belong in the same way that our fingers belong to our hands. Our heart belongs to our body. We are made one in this revelation of the gospel of Jesus. So it starts with belonging. It's all through scripture. You see it all through there. Henry Nouwen said this. He said, the Bible is primarily a book not of information, but of formation. Not merely a book to be analyzed, scrutinized, and discussed, but a sacred book to nurture us, to unify our hearts and minds, and to serve as a constant source of contemplation. You see, the sense of belonging comes not primarily intellectually, but by the experience of, of being known, of being accepted, and of being loved. And that's what the Bible is primarily designed to do, is to nurture that experience within us. Not just give us information. It does. It gives us information. It gives us stories. But it is divine in the sense that it, it confirms and gives voice to what we are experiencing through the Holy Spirit and through the community of the church. That you belong. We all belong. That God has gathered us as God's people. So, so it's all through the Bible. And, you know, if I could, just an aside here. If by some chance... I was, given the chance, I was given the power to make one change in the English versions of the Bible. And this is, this is a problem just with English versions. I would change every time in the Bible where it says you and it is referring to a group, I would change that to y'all. Because y'all is more biblically correct in this sense. The, the plural pronoun, personal pro pronoun you, can mislead us to think that oftentimes the Bible is meant in the singular, when in reality it's often talking, it's most often talking to the group. It's y'all is a word of belonging. And uh, like I said, if I was given the chance, I'd change all the use to y'all when it talks to a group of people. But anyway, well, so let's go on to the historical framing. So starting with the Reformation, but really accentuated in the, in the Enlightenment. The pattern of church affiliation or church belonging was changed. See, what we saw in ancient Israel and what we saw even in the early church practiced was, was this pattern that we're talking about today, that it started with belonging. You were born into a group of people. You were, you were included in that group often without, without even your choice. Like this because you were born there, you spoke a language or you were part of a household. And because of that identity, it was an incumbent upon you to become a certain way, to behave in a certain manner, to live into that identity. The end result of that experience was you would, you would believe the truth of what that group identified with. And in the church, the idea also was that as you practiced the acts of being a Christian, the way that the church does things, that your, your intellect would follow that, that it wouldn't start with the intellect, but it would follow your experience. But like I said, starting with the Reformation and then primarily with the Enlightenment, that, that whole process got flipped. 
to where we are today. So in the modern, especially American, Western evangelical church, the process is no longer belong, become, believe, but it's believe, become, belong. Now, why is this important? Well, because if, if belonging is at the end, if belonging is the result, then everything that, that comes before that, belief and becoming, is, is dependent. It, 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 our, our belonging is dependent on it. So the whole, the whole process becomes transactional. And as much as we've talked in the modern Western evangelical church about not being a works-oriented church, when the process is believe, become, and then belong, there's no escaping it. It will be a works-oriented church. No matter how much we preach against us, no matter how much we talk about grace, it will be earning because works is rooted in earning. And if we have to earn our belonging by confessing to the, the correct doctrine and that doctrine continually being refined or behaving in a certain manner that depends on whether we're in or out, uh, we're, we're locked in works. We are slaves to earning with that. Now look, neither one of these, these systems that I'm describing here is perfect. They both have flaws, but we've swung so hard to the side, kind of the enlightenment side of believe first, then, then become, and then maybe you'll be accepted, maybe you'll belong, that it is destroyed a generation of people by feeling like they had to earn God's love. They had to earn their place in the church. And so at Grace Church, what we're trying to practice is bring balance back to that, is to understand that it starts with belonging. And then out of that, out of what we have, what we have already received, we see our lives transformed, and that leads to the enlightenment of our minds by what we've experienced of God's love and God's belonging. David Bentley Hart, the theologian, says this. He says, Christianity entered human history not as a new creed or system of religious observances, but as an apocalypse, the sudden unveiling of a mysterious God before the foundation of the world. I want you to go back and reread the, the Gospels and see how Jesus is unveiling. That's what apocalypse means. It's not a scary word. It just means the unveiling. It means something that has been hidden is suddenly revealed. The veil is pulled back. And Jesus does that when primarily he says to the people who don't belong, the tax collector, the prostitute, the uneducated, the outcast, the Gentile, the sick. He says, no, you belong. Now, did they have to believe something first? Time and time again, we see, no, they don't. It's Jesus mirrored, it's the proclamation of Jesus saying, you belong, come with me, come, follow me. The disciples didn't know what they were getting into. They didn't have some intellectual assent to a doctrine before they followed Jesus. Like, they were just responding to the call of belonging. And that's what we're seeking to do at Grace Church is respond to the unveiling of Jesus that comes from Jesus, that we belong, that no matter how we have felt excluded, either, either self-excluded by ourselves or excluded by other people, those are no longer true. That everyone, regardless, belongs. And that by starting with that belonging, we will, be, we will become who we were supposed to be with that. Well... So that's the scriptural reference. That's a historical setup. What about the warning? Well, the warning are all the things that sabotage this. Because, y'all, it may sound simple, but it's not. It's not easy to live into. We live in a world that is constantly trying to disqualify us. Disqualify us by our, our gender, our race, our income, our intellect, sexual orientation, politics, who we root for, where we went to school. Like, think of all the ways that we cut each other off, we separate, we other people. That's the business of the world. That's not the business of the church. The church is antithetical to that. 
the church's, the church's message is come, all you who weary, all you who are outcast, all you who feel like you've been discarded, been disqualified. Come. You belong. But there's a lot of things that subvert that. Like I said, the world does. Shame does. We don't feel like we're worthy. We feel like we've, we've fouled things up beyond all recognition with that. And then there's also self-righteousness and pride. I mean, it's there in all of us. The thought that I, I don't need you to offer me grace. I'll earn it. Right? Because that's the system we, we are so used to. And those of us who may be ahead, by whatever metric we measure life or success, the thought, the thought that we would be extended mercy or grace, is, it's actually kind of offensive to us. It offends our pride with that. And so we stay outside of that community. Nothing is more offensive to the person who feels like they have earned their place than grace. And yet grace is how we get in. This unmerited, unending grace. The other thing is exceptionalism, right? We feel like, well, hey, well, of course we're in, but not about those people. Well, let me tell you, excluding anyone excludes everyone. There is no way around it. Whether it's racism or gender bias or whatever it is, when you start cutting off other people, you're cutting off part of yourself with that. And exceptionalism destroys this idea of, of belonging. And let's, there's a hundred other things, but maybe the last one I just want to talk about here is fear of rejection. Is that fear that, that intuitively we know we need to belong, we want to belong, we want to be accepted. But we fear if people really knew us or if we were really allowed ourselves to believe that that would happen, that we would we may be rejected. And that's a legitimate fear. And this sabotages this idea of belonging. But we have to return to this idea that God says, I'll never leave or forsake you. That the mercy of God is for everyone forever in that. And that's the basis of belonging. Well, listen, I don't have to go in very much longer to t say that all of us have experienced rejection all of us have experienced judgment that led to our disqualification or being left out or passed over, forgotten, demeaned, categorized. But that's the system of the world. That is not, that is not the system of the church. At least it's not supposed to be. Now listen, Grace Church isn't perfect by any way, shape, or form. We're all trying. We're all practicing this. And we all come from this system of the world where that runs on rejection, that runs on earning, that runs on works. We are all learning how to be free from that. But that's why we're so adamant about declaring this from the start is that we are going to attempt, we are going to practice we're going to remind ourselves and be reminded that it starts with belonging. You see, sin separates us not only from God, but from each other. Now, that's a pretty basic statement. I don't know that anybody would argue with that, but the way that that, just in a very basic sense, sin is, sin is separation. So what is the good news, if it is anything, if it's not? belonging, if it is not restoring that relationship. That's the promise of the good news, and it has to be the promise of the church, is that those relationships that have been broken by sin, that sin will not win. Sin will not prevail. That God has overcome sin in the revelation and person of Jesus Christ. And that you are welcome, that you belong. You belong. Y'all belong. And that's what we're trying to be at Grace Church. So thanks for joining with us. Grace and peace, y'all.